welcome back to another video. Today I have a more chatty video um, than usual and what I'm going to be doing is showing you guys my favorite art supplies and books that I have been absolutely loving this year, this past year of 2022. And I am very excited to show you guys some of the new things that I tried out and absolutely love and uh, yeah just chat about art supplies really. So without any further ado let's get into it. So the first thing that I want to discuss is actually not really an art supply. I mean, I guess it is, but it's more of an art supply slash stationery thing. And it's this automatic pencil sharpener. I know this is an odd thing to start off with, but this thing right here has been an amazing friend to have on my desk. So it's an automatic pencil sharpener by Tenwin. I've had it for a few months now and I've used it like almost every day and I haven't like had to recharge it yet. So it's got an incredible battery life. Um, another thing that I really love is you can like adjust down here um, the pencil sharpness. And it's awesome because for example, if I take this pencil and I want to sharpen it, it does this. Isn't that so sick? <laughs> It's a bit noisy, um, but it is super awesome and it sharpens all my pencils like in a matter of seconds and it just like sucks them in and then spits them back out and it's just like so sick. It uh, has made me getting back into using colored pencils just a lot easier because <laughs> I'm a bit lazy when it comes to sharpening my pencils. So yeah, that baby is definitely a must for <laughs> this video. So a recent art supply that I got from Artix is these acrylic markers. I did a video on these recently on my channel. So if you guys haven't watched that, I did like a full review of these alongside some of their other uh, alcohol markers, but these were definitely the star of the show. And they are, as they say on the tin, they're an, uh, an acrylic marker. Um, so they're like um, a paint marker but the most awesome thing about these is that they're brush nibs so a brush nib acrylic marker and they are so opaque they work just like a paint pen but with an, a, like a, a brush tip so they're so awesome for doing like little details and I don't know I just found the formula for these so awesome considering that they have a flexible brush nib I've just never seen a pen like this before and they really performed amazing I was very impressed with these and I use them a lot in my uh, traditional drawings now. Again, I did a full review of these on my channel a few weeks slash months ago, so definitely check that out if you'd like a more in-depth review. Continuing on an Artix uh, groove, I actually wanted to discuss this new thing that I got from them recently that um, I haven't done a full video on yet, but it's coming to the channel very soon. If not next week, then definitely in the new year. And it is their new coloring pencil set. It's 126 colors and uh, they just came out with these recently and they are, oh God, look at that. You see that packaging? Not really sexy. I really love the packaging of these and they're so, so cool. And I've been using them a lot over the past week and a half actually since they sent it to me. And it's, they're so good. You guys, like, they're so, so good. I have some other uh, coloring pencils in this video that I want to discuss, but these have kind of stolen the show recently. Not only is it a really big, extensive set, but the pencils are soft core, so they actually blend really well with each other. They glide on the paper beautifully, and they blend in with each other really nicely. But I will be having, like, a full review video coming out with these bad boys very soon, but I did want to mention them in this video because um they have slowly but surely become my favorite pencils that i have right now and since we're on a coloring pencil kick i wanted to show some of my other favorite pe coloring pencil sets so a set that i've been really loving this year is these woodless arteza coloring pencils there's no wood in these it's just like a the, the pencil lead as is these are really lovely because um again they're very sort of soft somehow still <laughs> even though they have like no wood casing to protect them um but yeah they're very soft and the colors are super bright that's also something i forgot to say about the arctic pencils but the colors are so bright and opaque and so saturated um and that goes for these as well i also really like that they're a smaller set so they're not like 
an overwhelming amount of colors. I actually like having these just in my pencil case and uh, this way I have like a nice range of colors without uh, being overwhelmed with choice, I guess. You can still like mix and match all these colors together and they're also very easy to do shading with because again, the whole pencil is lead so you can like tilt it and cover a large surface uh, area with them. Yeah, they're just really cool and um, versatile as a coloring pencil and I really like them. Another small set of coloring pencils that I got this year that I really liked is this um, Faber-Castell Classic Color coloring pencil set. It's another small set of pencils that I think are still very versatile, even though you don't get that many colors. They're still enough, just the amount of colors that you would need because they do, again, blend very nicely with each other and you can overlay these colors without picking up the pencils from underneath and they will create different hues and stuff like that. So I like to play around with these in my sketchbook. I also carry those around in a pencil case sometimes um, if I just want to like do some colored pencil sketches and they're lovely. They do the job. Just a nice quick set of coloring pencils that I recommend. And lastly, in the colored pencils uh, segment of this video, um, I couldn't not mention these Prismacolor Colorase pencils. I know that they're like all the rage and uh, everyone really loves these, and, but they're really expensive and hard to find. So these are the only two I have. I have the blue one and the uh, red one. And just look how tiny that one is. <laughs> you can't, I can't even tell you the color name technically of this one because it's not, I don't even have the Thing on it anymore. But yeah, these are um, probably some of my favorite pencils to do underlaying sketches with. So doing line art for pieces that I'm then gonna go in with other supplies or other materials. There's a reason why artists love these. They're just really nice. And yeah, you can like erase them very easily. So um, they're good for if you make mistakes with your line art. These are very lovely. I don't use the blue one as, much, as nearly as much as I use the uh, the dark red one, obviously, but I'm getting into doing more blue line art sort of sketches recently. So hopefully I'll get to use this one more. Now getting into markers and going back into acrylic markers and things like that. If you guys watch literally any of my bullet journal videos or anything like that, you know that I absolutely go crazy for these art journal of acrylographs. I've only got a few colors here, but obviously I've got every single color of theirs over there on my desk. They're just so good. Again, they're an acrylic marker, so kind of like a, a paint marker. Very, very opaque colors, and you can literally draw on top of anything with these, and it will be the most opaque, bright color. They've got like a small nib. I've got both the three millimeter sizes and the 0 0.7 millimeter sizes, so they offer it in two sizes. And Archer and Olive just came out with the uh, col col Calligraphs, calligraphs. I can't remember the name very well, but it's basically a version of these with brush nibs. And I still haven't gotten my hands on those yet, but I do really want to try them so much. These were obviously um, a, a hot favorite of the year, especially because I got to actually design my own set of these pens that went with my sketchbook that I designed with Archer and Olive for a collaboration. I'll show you the sketchbook in a bit because that's also one of my favorites for this year. But um, yeah, you can find the whole set and the bundle down there in the description. I'm pretty sure they're on sale at the moment. So yeah, I highly recommend them. <laughs> Next up on markers, if you guys watched any of my videos this year, um, you'll know that these were a big bad boy that I loved. The Arteza Everblend markers are so, so good. I have the big chunky set um, because I was very grateful and thankful that I got to do a lot of collaborations with them this year. I was um, a part of their Fuel Your Creativity campaign this summer. It was so, so cool. And they gave me so many lovely goodies and I'm so, so happy. So you guys know that I've always been a big fan of Ohuhu markers, like over the past few years, those are the pens that I kind of learned how to use alcohol markers with. It was those, but these are like my new all time favorites. They're the ones that I reach for. They're so amazing. They've got a brush nib and and a small bullet nib on the other side. And they're just so amazing. The colors are so vibrant, so saturated, and they blend so beautifully with each other that I just, I just love a good, reliable set of markers. And these are definitely my go-to at the moment. And I feel like they will be for a long time. <laughs> yeah, it is quite a big chunky set. So obviously if I do ever take these pens out to work, I'll just select a few colors that I know I'll love and need. But it is also really cool that they gave me this funky little snazzy case. 
in case I do want to travel with them. Love these bad boys. Um, I've done a bunch of videos with these in them. Um, I'll link them all in the description uh, if you guys want to see a fuller review of these and just me using them all the time. So yeah, love, love, love these babies. Next up, I wanted to talk about these Himi gouache paints. I think I got these last year, if I'm honest, but I have been loving them ever since and I did really want to mention them in the video because they are a, a favorite, that's for sure. Um, these are the Himi gouache, like jelly gouache paints that were like all the rage last year. Everyone was like, oh my god, these are so cute, I want to eat them, <laughs> which is true. Like I, I also wanted to eat them, weirdly enough, but they are really good gouache. They're really easy to reactivate. That's usually an issue with gouache paints is that they dry out and they're very hard to reactivate but honestly with a spritz of water um, from like a spray bottle these are very easy to reactivate and as you can see I've used them quite a lot and I really enjoy them um, they're kind of the gouache that I that got me into loving gouache I highly recommend these I know that some people are still quite on the fence about whether or not these are worth it but I I would say that they are I really really like them and they're very mess free especially once they like dry out the first time they come in a really cute case too and i really like them again i've done a review of this set on my channel i'll put the video down in the description as well so you can watch it and so you can watch them in action now getting more into paper and sketchbooks and that sort of stuff i wanted to also discuss this this bad boy right here that you've probably seen in a bunch of my videos uh this year and it's the cricut bright pad it's a uh, Oh, look at that. I might start using it as like a, a light, a lighting source. <laughs> but yeah, so it's a, uh, a light pad that you can change the brightness of, and it's uh, mainly for, you know, like transferring designs onto a new piece of paper. And basically, yeah, it's just a light box really. <laughs> but I really like it, it because it's chargeable and you don't it's you don't have to use a cable with it. Cricut sent it to me very, very nicely. They're, they're awesome from one of the sponsorships that I did with them this year. And honestly, I never used any other light box with it because this one is so, again, reliable. That's the brightest one that I've ever had. Um, I can easily transfer a drawing onto like a really thick piece of watercolor paper without any issue. Whereas with other light pads, I've had like problems with um, it not being bright enough to see through the watercolor paper, but this bad boy is awesome. So it's a little bit more expensive than your usual run of the mill light box, but it's definitely worth it because of just how convenient it is and I always use this when doing traditional drawing. And next up, I wanted to show you guys this bad boy that again, you've probably seen in a lot of my videos this year. It is the Stratford Wood Pulp Watercolor Pad. It's a cold press, acid-free 300 GSM. And I love this watercolor pad. I, they also sent me another one that is cotton, cotton pulp, if I'm not wrong, and it's really sick too. I've been using nothing but this watercolor paper in all of my traditional paintings recently. Stratford Arts were super sweet and sent me these, as, long as, as well as the other paper pad that I mentioned for one of the videos that I did for them this year. Again, I'll post the review video down in the description box. But I, yeah, I'm a big fan. I still use this all the time. I was always a very big uh, daily Taylor Rowney, Taylor Rowney, Taylor and Rowney, is that how you say it? I was always a big fan of those watercolor pads and uh, I've kind of been transferred onto Stratford Arts now. And finally, as promised, I thought I'd mention my little sketchbook that I did with Archer and Olive. And I've been using this sketchbook all year so far. Um, I'm almost finished with it. I think I'm like three quarters of the way through with this sketchbook. So hopefully I'll have a sketchbook tour for you soon. I am so proud of this. It was such a lovely collaboration that came out this year. I designed the cover for this sketchbook and um, it is, it's got holographic pages on the sides and the paper is so amazing. I literally draw in it every single day <laughs> and I use markers, I use colored pencils, I've used gouache and watercolor in this as well, and I'm just a huge, huge fan of this sketchbook. I think that it works really well with all kinds of mediums, and I just think it's awesome. Uh, it also came with like this little 
sort of exercise double spread at the beginning where um, it had a little note from me and some little like mindful exercises that you could do relating to art. I couldn't have a favorites video without mentioning this one because it's been my, uh, my best friend for the entire year. Again, I'll leave the link to this bundle down there in the description um, so you guys can have a look. I'm pretty sure it's on sale right now. Uh, the bundle comes with this sketchbook, the acrylograph pen set that I designed, as well as some printable goodies that you can like color in. Then I've got some little bits and bobs that I wanted to mention for the remainder of the art supply segment of the video. These are just some bits that I've been really enjoying carrying around in my on-the-go pencil case that I've been loving sketching with. So the first thing that I 100% have to mention is this Tombow Mono Zero eraser. And I've been absolutely loving this since last year, actually. And it's just a, a little like mechanical eraser and it's got the teeniest, tiniest little um, eraser at the top and you can like, yeah, it's refillable. And I'm so obsessed with this. I can't like, it is an essential in my pencil case at the moment because when I'm doing like sketches in my sketchbook or doing like any detailed um, sort of line art or sketch, this always comes in handy to like erase little mistakes and to add little highlights here and there in uh, graphite pencil drawings. So this bad boy is a definitely a favorite. And another one that I have tried recently that I also really like is this uh, Faber-Castell water-based varnish sort of eraser thing. So it's kind of like a, um, an eraser pencil and it kind of does the same thing that this Tombow Mono Zero eraser does. It just helps erase tiny little spots and helps with doing like little details as small as hair strands. And it's also sharpenable. Is that a word? <laughs> so you can make it as like tiny and detailed as you want. Uh, next up, I have to mention this pencil because like, look at how tiny it is. I got this in the summer and that's how small it is. Um, and it is the Blackwing Matte Pencil. Here it is, so you guys can see it. It is so, so good. I actually won this pencil along with some other amazing goodies at like a portrait competition at the place where I do life drawing sessions a lot. So they were doing like a special session and we did like a portrait competition and I won, which was super cool. So yeah, I won this this bad boy as well as this uh, pencil, the Stabilo Carbotello white pencil, which is another one of my favorites that I was about to mention. So yeah, I got both of these um, as, a, as a prize and I'm so obsessed with this that I'm so mad at myself that I liked it so much because these are quite expensive. I've come to find out and wanting to replace this when it's gone. So it'll be like a, a sweet little treat for me, um, like maybe once a year getting a set of these. Uh, they're so, so good though. They're really nice. It's just like a, a black pencil, but it's super, super like deep, rich black as well as it's um, matte. So it doesn't have that like shine that normal graphite pencils have, which is super cool for like photographing and um, just drawing <laughs> in your sketchbook really. It just has like a matte finish and it's just a really good pencil, but I've come to love a lot. Oh, it also has an eraser by the way. It's just like finished, of course. I just should mention that it has an eraser at the other side. Finally, these mechanical pencils that hold two millimeter lead. Honestly, I love a good mechanical pencil as long as it has like a really thick lead in it. So that's why I've really gotten back into using these. I got these like 2B two millimeter lead. So the lead is also quite dark and soft and you can get like really like dark colors really easily. And yeah, they have like a little sharpener at the top. So you take the little cap off and you can sharpen the lead. So that way you can sharpen the nib because obviously it's a very thick lead so it can get quite uh, rounded. <laughs> so this way you can sharpen it. But yeah, I'm a big fan of these. They're awesome for traveling and doing nice quick sketches. You can do um, a lot of beautiful like cross hatching and shading in like larger areas because of the larger lead size. So these are like also another essential in my pencil case. So now I want to get into some of my favorite art books that I got this year. So if you watched my last video where I gave you guys a tour of all of my art books, um, I think I posted that last year. So this is basically all the art books that I got since then that I've added to my collection. This first one was the last one that I got and um, I got this at uh, Thought Bubble just two weeks ago because Lorenzo, like the two brothers were there and I was like, oh my God, I have no idea you're going to be here. 
So I got the volume five of their How to Think When You Draw with Lorenzo because it was the new volume that wasn't technically out yet. It's a very good book. It's like a, a tutorials. Oh yes, yeah, signed by them, of course. So it's like a tutorials book um, with like little tips and tricks on like things to think about when you're drawing, like perspective wise, etc. And yeah, I love this series of books they do. I follow them on Instagram for a while. And uh, next up, I got two really cool art books from um, Traveling Man. Actually, no, I got this one from London Comic Con because this uh, book was like barely out in um, in the UK. Like you pretty much could only get it in Japan. So when I saw it at London Comic Con, I was like, yes, please. And it's just the art book from the first season of Jujutsu Kaisen. It's uh, just got like all like character designs and like storyboards and color stories of um, the, the first season. And it's uh, really cool because I also read the manga for this and it's really cool to see how they translate the manga into the anime, so. I'm a big sucker for animation art books. So that one was obviously a must. And the other art book that I got, this probably one of my favorites um, that I got this year is the Toilet Bound Hana Kokun art book. This book is so cute. As soon as I watched Hana Kokun, um, the anime, the first season, I fell in love with it so much because of the colors and the style. And it's so beautiful and it was so inspiring that when I saw this art book at Traveling Man here in Manchester, I had to get it. And it's just a collection of illustrations and different designs that they used for uh, the the uh, the show, as well as, as some little comics at the back. And it's such a pretty, pretty art book. Um, I think actually, if I take off the sleeve, yeah, the, it's just got a bunch of, uh, those little bunny things that are in the show that I forget the name of. Mokes. Yeah, it's got a bunch of mokes. Uh, next up, uh, I actually got sent this book from Minnie Small herself, and it is her book that she released this year called The 30 Day Sketchbook Project by Minnie Small. And honestly, this book being sent to me by her was so... Like it was just a really beautiful like full circle moment because uh, Minnie Small was one of the first art YouTubers that I started watching like years ago and she was like a main inspiration for me in like starting my own YouTube channel and doing my own videos. So when she reached out to me uh, saying that she wanted to send me a copy of her book, I was like so starstruck and yeah, it was just a really emotional moment. So. Uh, thank you so much, Minnie, from sen for sending me your book. It's a really good book, you guys. Like, it's um, got a bunch of, like, exercises, ideas, prompts, and uh, practices that you can do in your own sketchbook to, like, elevate the way that you sketch every day and um, how to basically improve your art with this 30-day project. I really recommend it, and I really love Minnie Small. Next up, I have two uh, books that I actually supported on Kickstarter. So... There are two art books by two of my like favorite artists. So the first one is the Sibylline one, obviously. This is was the first one that I got this year. It's the Reverie, Re Reverie. It's basically uh, her art book. <laughs> Comes in this little sleeve. And um, this is the art book. It is so beautiful, you guys. It's like a, a whole like inside look at her art process um how she like comes up with ideas her um her like actual process with using uh gouache and the mediums that she likes using and just like her story her past it's so well made and um it's really nice to have like an in-depth look at like behind the artist or behind the art it also came with like some really cool stickers some prints that are actually on my wall back here <laughs> I love this book so much. It was such a good read and it was just incredibly inspiring. And next up, I have uh, another one which is from Fifal. And you guys, again, if you know Fifal, you know how amazing her art is. And I love her so much. I've been following her for years. And it comes in this amazing uh, book <laughs> box again. 
And there is the art book. It's so beautiful. And again, it's just an amazing book with like an amazing insight into her process and um, the way that she works, the way that she comes up with ideas and how she then translates them into her style and um, how she completes her works. It, again, it was an amazing read. It was uh, very inspiring. And yeah, again, it came with some really cool prints that are all up on my walls, some stickers and even some um, desktop backgrounds that I uh, currently use on my computer as well. All of these will be down there in the description, the links for these, so you, can, you guys can go have a look for yourselves. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> All right, I really hope you enjoyed. Let me know if you actually have any of these supplies, what your opinions are on them, if you would like to check any of these out. As I said, everything will be down there in the description so you can have a look for yourself. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you had a nice time just sitting here and chatting with me and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye-bye.